Every Hollywood superhero moving forward will be required to have at least one LGBTQ character shoved into the story. What do you mean moving forward? <laughs> We're already there, buddy. As occasionally happens on this show, maybe more than ever in this episode though, I am completely out of my depth because today I will be playing the yes or no game with my friend Eric July, the biggest comic book maven on the right, and one of the biggest ones in the country, frankly, founder of Ripaverse, the founder of Being Libertarian, we won't hold that against him though, and now a participant in Yes or No. Get your copy of Yes or No over at dailywire.com slash shop. We have sold about a bazillion copies of this game, and it's still not as many as the number of comic books that Eric has sold. So head on over right now, dailywire.com slash shop. The most anticipated follow-up to the best-selling game is finally here. The Yes or No Conspiracy Expansion Pack is here. If you haven't gotten the full Yes or No game, now would be the time. Go to dailywire.com slash shop. Get yours and the all-new Yes or No Conspiracy Expansion Pack. Play responsibly. Eric. Thank you for coming in. Oh, of course, man. I'm actually stoked to play this. So the, the first time I ever even heard about you, my producer said, you know, here's this guy, you know, you should have money. I was like, wow, that sounds so interesting. I was like, but I never, man, I don't know anything about comic books. I don't, there's no, I don't think the audience is going to really be there for that, but whatever, let's try it out. And then you were one of the fan favorites of all time of the show. So I'm very excited. Here we go. I hate all comic book movies. Oh, Eric, this is not starting off well for you. What? I hate almost all comic book movies. So I was close. I liked Logan. And to a lesser degree, I liked Dark Knight. I, I didn't like Dark Knight as much as okay. everybody liked Dark Knight. I thought it was fine. I okay. enjoyed it. Okay. I really liked Logan. Is it like because it's more like dark-ish? Because that... it's a cowboy movie. Okay. Logan, it was... The fact that it was a superhero movie was kind of tangential. I got you. I, you know what I'm saying? But, which I guess the same thing is true of Dark Knight. But the other ones, like Captain Marvel America 17 with some chick spouting off feminism, I can't. I, nobody I, wants that. Nobody wants that. It's not just me. Everybody yeah, hates yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you on that. That's, um, most of them are terrible. Most of them are. <laughs> are, are I'll be the first to tell you that. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of these. They're not, they're not yeah. really that good, but I can, I can deal with most of them, let's just say that. So, have you seen any of the like the Netflix ones that were like Daredevil? If no, you like I Logan and Dark Knight, you never. Seen I heard Daredevil was good. Though. I think if you like Logan and you like Dark Knight, I think yeah. I think Daredevil might be up your street. I want to see the Ripaverse Studio movies. That's what I want to see coming. Up. Hey man, at this rate, that might happen sooner than later. It might. It, it, like seriously, yeah, it, it actually might happen sooner or later. Man, all right, you're up. Political commentary is the lowest form of art. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Let's say you would say no, or would you say yes? I would say that, to me, it brings out the ugly in people, and mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of it. People know that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's kind of in the title. Mm -hmm. But I do think there's something to be said for the people that are able to galvanize troops. I think that's a there's a that's an art net. If you mm. can like, no matter what it is. But is it the lowest? It maybe I, I agree there's an art net, but is it the lowest? <sighs> that is, it's it's down there. It's down mm -hmm. there. It's definitely down it's there. It's down there. Uh -huh. It's for sure down there. Do you know why I say? So you're right. I don't think it's the okay. lowest for okay. art, but the only reason, slam poetry. That is obviously a lower form of art than even the worst political commentary. Okay. I, can, I can see that. Right? I'm, death, actually, I, I'm actually following you on that <laughs> I'm, actually follow, I, I'm actually following you on I'll that. I'll drink anyway, though. So you know the rules. The rules, if you get it wrong, you have to drink. And yeah. if you get it right, you get to drink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That works for me. It was just a coincidence that the major opponents of the Federal Reserve died when the Titanic sank in 1912. Hmm. Hmm. It was just a coincidence. <laughs> so in 
So I'll tell you what. I, you're right. I soft lean, yes, it was a coincidence. But I tell you, man, I don't really like coincidences. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I find them delightful, but I often see intention behind coincidences. Yes. I mean, I can actually see where it is a coincidence. And I, I'm the libertarian here, so I'm, yeah, I'm th- you're I supposed think every, to be. I know. I'm, so that's where I'm supposed to be. But I don't know if the, the guys that were the actual, that were advocating this knew just how rotten hmm. it was going to be years, years beyond. Because you mm. think of it even in the context of right now. A lot of people are economically illiterate. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we, we accept that. However, you know, people tend to kind of grow out of that sometimes. I mean, what's the old saying? Like you're, yeah, you're a conservative you're, if you uh, whatever if hit If you're at, not a liberal by the time you're 17, right. you don't have a heart. And if you're not a conservative by 30, you don't have a brain. Exactly. You know? So uh, considering that, I like to think that even the people that were advocates of it didn't know how rotten it actually mm. was. And it, I mean, the people that were against it probably didn't understand just how bad it was going to, let's say, impact the economy, especially going to... 1913 sucked because you didn't just have that. You had the income taxes implemented then uh, that same year. It's just a terrible year. Well, what happened to the income tax, guys? We need to figure that out. And the Titanic. Yeah. It was 1912, I think. But it was right around that time. Yeah, yeah. That... uh, Yeah, I, I, I really... I like your take on it because it's rosy in that you're giving the benefit of the doubt. Which I shouldn't be doing. Yeah, but no, it's very charitable. I, should, uh, I probably should mm-hmm. be doing that, though, to be fair. <laughs> Fine, I'll say it. The Little Mermaid was hot garbage. <laughs> and it should only be shown to inmates of Guantanamo Bay for interrogation purposes. What kind of information are you going to get out of them? If you, okay, so hold on. But now you got to... This is vague. Are we talking about the original Little Mermaid or the new no, one? No, we have to talk about the new one. It's let's, the new let's, one. Let's okay, make, okay. It, let's make it apply to the new okay. one. So we're saying that, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I did not see it, and I read like half a news article about it, but that's okay. not going to stop me from having a very strong opinion on the subject. And yes, I totally agree with that. And it's especially painful because the original Little Mermaid, which came out when I was four or mm-hmm. something, I, I not only loved it, I loved her. She was very hot. <laughs> Little Mermaid, all right, the recent one, yeah, I think everybody, even the people that were defending it, they they have to accept. I mean, it doesn't matter if they think it was great or it sucked anyway because it lost all that money or it's going to lose all <laughs> this money. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's it, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, I, I don't even understand. I don't know if you remember, what's the actress's name? Halle Bailey or something? I think that's the lead actress name for the new Little Mermaid, right? Is Halle Bailey different than Halle? Halle Bailey, yes, they're two different. Okay. I get them. I get. The I don't names. know. I haven't seen a movie <laughs> yeah. in a while. No, uh, she. So she went on to say that she was obviously influenced by the original Little Mermaid. She loved it, but then she flipped, and then out of nowhere, she's talking about mm. well, the little black and brown boys can see, it and they can finally be influenced and all that. I'm like, well, you still somehow got something out of it <laughs> when you were young, yeah. despite it being a fair skinned Little Mermaid. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, mm. to be honest. I can't think of anything whiter than a Danish fairy tale. Well, this so this is a big debate though, because that was that was my take, and I guess that still basically remains my take. Is it's Hans Christian Andersen, you know, Little Mermaid is a white character, and so they're 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 just race switching to be you know provocative politically. My friend Spencer Clavin had a different take. He said that actually the Little Mermaid should be black, even though it's written by a Danish guy. Okay. Because where is the mermaid being spotted? Mermaid's being spotted somewhere in the Caribbean. And so, you know, you don't buy it. No, no I'm okay. sorry. I will say that definitely African African folklore has mermaids. Why didn't they just do those? Mm. If they really wanted to tell one of those stories. That's now, did you hear there's a there's a story from Columbus's voyage where he sees a mermaid. And he writes about this. Okay. And the libs today, they say, well, he saw a manatee. He mistook a manatee for a mermaid. And I thought, I don't know, man. Unless that guy was blind, I don't yeah. I wouldn't mistake. How do you manatee. mess that one up, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I don't I mean, they're all modern libs, so they don't believe in any like fun yeah. mystical stuff. But I don't know. I like look, I don't know, maybe the guy saw a, a mermaid, is it, what I'm saying. I mean, it could, I guess it could happen. I don't know. Could People are not? talking about seeing aliens. Why can't they see a mermaid? Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. Although most are charlatans, some psychics are real and can actually see and predict someone's future. You're going to say no, and you're going to get mine incorrect, my friend. What? Oh, yeah, you're going to have to explain yourself. I don't know. I think there's more. 
in heaven and earth than is dreamt of in our philosophy, Horatio. I think some of these guys, look, they're all dealing with the devil. I mean, it's all bad stuff. Oh, okay. But, but like when the Bible says, the Bible go, it says, don't consult astrologers. Don't consult yeah. these yeah. mediums and stuff. But I don't think the Bible says that because it's like they're a bunch of dumb idiots and they're charlatans who are going to steal your money. I think the Bible says that because it's real. And sometimes these people, maybe a lot of them are charlatans, but maybe sometimes that you actually can do it and that it's demonic. Never heard it expressed like that. I thought for sure definitely going the, the, uh, the biblical route, you would have for sure said the opposite. But putting it that way, yeah. I can see, I, I guess I can kind of see where you're coming from. So you're looking at it from the perspective of that. They exist, and because you can't separate what is truth from what is false. And, and because it compromises your free will. So if you go to a psychic and the psychic says, you know, you're going to die on Thursday. Okay. Then, if, if you, you know, if you predict the future, you read the stars or whatever, um, you're compromising your free will, and you're not trusting in God's providence. You're, you're trying to assert control over the, the order of things. Uh, you even see this in the Bible in uh, The Witch of Endor mm-hmm. when Saul, who says, no more necromancy, you know, and he goes to the Witch of Endor and he's like, hey, I need to talk to some dead people. And she goes, nah, King Saul said we can't do that anymore. And he's like, yeah, don't worry about King Saul. I'll take care of him. And uh, she goes, okay, whatever. And then she conjures up the ghost of Samuel. But what's real, and look, this is just my interpretation of this scene, but she seems kind of surprised that she actually conjured up this ghost. Okay. Which makes me wonder, is she mostly a charlatan? But then when the ghost comes up, she's like, oh, she's shoot, like, man, oh, I wow, actually conjured I just, a ghost. I just pulled this off yeah. type of, oh, I, guess, I guess I could see that. I mean, the Bible's interesting, man. I definitely read, you know, read a lot more of it as an adult, and you start to pick up things. There's a little, even little stuff about you know, everybody has their position on dinosaurs, and you'll hear mm. in the Bible is explaining that these, like, massive uh, animals that are around. It's like, well, maybe, I mean, I don't think mm. they used the term dinosaur, <laughs> but maybe that was what they were referring to. So yeah. I can see that. Can yeah, see that. okay. All right, now I don't, I'm just going to choose to drink on that one. Yeah. All right. A parallel economy is the only way forward for non-leftists today. And I, I yeah, that's a that's a yeah. no-brainer. I think yeah. for me, it's there's no it's not even up for dispute. You know, I think there's a lot of pushback. I think people uh, they have some sort of how do I dare to explain this? They, the status quo comes with its set of familiarity as well as comfort, mm-hmm. right? And so I can understand and empathize with people that believe that there's something to salvage there. But I think for non-leftists, if we're going to be able to definitely be creative and to be able to do it freely, the parallel economy is the only answer. Of course. I mean, I'm trying to think, what would you and I be doing right now if we didn't bet on the parallel economy and if the parallel economy didn't exist? Yeah. I, do, I actually don't even know. I don't have that many hard skills. No. I, I, I don't, what, what I mean? I'd be in Hollywood like pushing a broom Yeah, no, no, it'd be, it'd be virtual. I mean, you get knocked down, you know, um, definitely as people have become so ideologically obsessed. You know, you'd be knocked yeah. down at every turn. Even if you did make any general stride, you'd be knocked down. So there's a lot of pushback on this, though. Yeah. I think there's a lot of folks that do believe that the status quo is worth salvaging. So, you know, get a little uh, nostalgia bait, especially with a lot of modern, like, creative stuff. Yeah. People are still clinging on to that idea that there will be room for us. And I'm like, oh, But here, here's the thing. is I'll, go, I'll use the pushing a broomstick in Hollywood example. So a lot, lot of people, if you're in Hollywood, that's what you do. You, you start in the mail room mm-hmm. or you start in doing these really basic jobs. But it used to be you would move up and there would be, uh, it would, you'd be building towards something. And what you're really trying to build toward is to help create this beautiful art Absolutely. or some kind of vision that you really believe in. But now... You go through all the hassle of pushing a broom, working in the mailroom. For what payoff? So that you can you can push some awful message and some ugly, dumb art that the audience doesn't even want to buy? Why wouldn't you just go start your own comic book and sell a bazillion copies? That's the only way forward. And I think people need to take that seriously as an option. Because, you know, we've had a lot of people, you know, talking about ISOM 2, for example, with Gabe Bell, Taib, and Cliff Richards. These are former Marvel and DC guys. You know, they tell me all the time how much fun that they're having with working with these sort of projects because it's more fulfilling than it ever had had been working for some soulless and sort of mega corporate entity. So with that being said, these guys feel like they're doing their best work, you know. So I think even if you just look at it just from the sense of you, if you're a creative person, you want to entertain people, whatever it is that you want to do, you really have to consider the parallel economy as the really the only option because yep. – 
that's the only place that you can be free to create. And you'll be rewarded too. So Absolutely. Or I mean, or you'll fail, but you could fail in anything. You know, anybody. But but at least here, you're you're controlling the audience. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Or the. You're serving the audience. You're, yeah. The audience kind of controls you, yeah. actually. But yeah. you're, you're serving a real audience. There's no mediator in there. The ISOM, ISOM, comic book, and its main character are attacked by the left primarily because the main character is black and the left is racist. That's the, so primarily, that's why. I, it's not the only reason. Yeah. Primarily, but primarily. I would say that yeah, you're you're correct. The reason being is because of what all that it means. Like the book's existence, the company's existence alone shatters everything that they not only believed about me, but they more importantly believed about the audience. Yeah. So it nullified them of whatever argument. The arguments that were, well, people have an issue with black characters. No, that was never the issue, right? And then, or people don't like to see black people be creative. No, that was never the problem. So you see all that stuff get knocked down, and that's why they're they're so aggravated and angry. And the racism, the legitimate racism, actually comes from the box of expectations that they have yeah. uh, of be it black characters or black uh, uh, black creatives. Like you have to think a certain way, and once you don't look, I say this here on the record: I have not been. I mean, I've done. I've had my hot takes politically. Right? We've all we've all <laughs> had those, and you get your pushback. Nothing has got me pushback, and this is apolitical more, more, more than anything. Nothing has got me more pushback than creating my own comic book company based on this character, or the first character that we, we launched being ISOM. But also, I've not been called any names remotely to what, I mean, I have to Google some of this stuff yeah. that I get called from these guys who are, apparently are fist, they, well, they, they claim to be fist in the air, pro-black, all yeah, of this stuff. Yeah. yeah, that stuff went out the window pretty early. Yeah, of course, of course, because re- that's really what gets the ire up. It's not so much the perspicacity of your insight. It's not so much the precision of your attack and rhetoric. It's success. Yeah. When you're successful, that's what really gets them the most. Yeah. Okay, you're up. Yeah, I'm up. A cr- oh man, this is good. Christopher Nolan is overrated. Mr. July, I'm afraid you're going to have to take a little sip of your Diet Coke. I think he is, I'm not saying he's totally uh, without talent. With the movies that you say that you like. I know, I know, but he's still... The, those movies are very good. He's a very, very fine director, especially for comic book movies. They talk about this guy like he walks on water. They talk about him like he's, you know, Orson Welles. They talk okay. about him like he's Coppola or something. He's not. He's like a fine movie maker. But to, I just think the, if, if he were to make Citizen Kane, if, he, if you put him to make The Godfather or, or uh, On the Waterfront or something like that, I wouldn't be, he, he wouldn't be up to the, the task. Okay, for me. Did I get that right? <sighs> wow, okay, huh? Okay, why, oh, the reason being, the reason being is because people look at what he, like, if we talk about the movies that you were just referencing, as that being the definitive version of those characters, and they're not. Mm. They're not, they're not. And too I'm, much artistic license. Far too much. I mean, top to bottom, really. It's, this replies yeah. really to everybody that's been in either of those movies. Um, that doesn't mean that if you look at it isolated, that they aren't good. Yeah. So I don't want anybody to think that oh, I'm saying they suck. No. But that's where to me they're overrated because now even to this day, people look at and they look at like what's the one of the greatest comic book movies or trilogies or whatever. What do they point to? The Dark Knight. Always. Okay, right there. Yeah. And I would say maybe if you look at it in isolation, but if you're talking about adaptations, no. No. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't, I can't go that far. Right, because I think even of like I'll just use the, like, Joker. Of course. You know, and That's you the main think, one. And you're just like, man, that that was an interesting movie. I enjoyed it. There were very memorable scenes, especially at the end. But that's not the Joker. I didn't know it isn't. That's just like a crazy guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like, interesting to watch a movie about a crazy guy. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. In movies and TV, men are held to a more unrealistic body standard than women. <laughs> you know, it's like us men, man. We just don't get enough. Uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> no, look, man, I'd love to complain as much as I can. Okay. Just say it's, but no, nah, you can you can be a kind of dad bod guy and still get away with. So that was especially true in the '50s when even the most fit guys were just like kind of fat. Yeah. But it's even true now. A guy can kind of get away with it. I'm thinking of. Obviously, older actors can really get away with it, but even younger guys. I mean, Leo's going through dad bod phases, yeah, yeah. right? And whereas for women, they they either need to be cartoonishly ugly, or they need to be very hot. I, I'll say this: I think men look at definitely like in a superhero realm. They look at they look at it different than what women do, right? So when uh, for whatever reason, women see a very attractive, even in a comic book, right? It's like, oh, it's unrealistic. Where are her organs, they'll say, yeah. if, if, if she is fit. And for us, it was just different. We would see He-Man and he's jacked to, to mm. the gills. And a lot of dudes looked at it like, I want to get, I want to get buffed up. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I want that's something to strive for. And I think still to this day, when you look at some of these anime, Goku has muscles where he, mm. a guy. I don't know if he can actually mm. really get there, but it's still like, oh, I can mm. be that person. That's how they look at it. So I think it's um, it's just a difference in approach. Mm. We just don't have an issue. Most men don't have an issue right. with seeing it versus women when they see a lot of characters, a female uh, character. That is just. Nobody can look like I could that. look at a modern Batman who's like built up like the craziest muscle man ever and just think like, okay, well, man, that's Batman. That's yeah. fine. But, the, but the, you think, you're right. In, in comic book movies, the men tend to be pretty jacked, except for Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah he's Parker's lean. Like a, kind of like slim. a lean, like weeby yeah. kind of guy. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay. Yeah. I'll choose to drink for that. Okay. Right. You're up. In general... The left wins more libertarians over than the right does. Mm. Hmm. You're going to say no, but I am going to say yes. And if you had asked me this question seven years ago, I would have said no. Okay. The, the right gets more libertarian. Because libertarians cut, they're the right libertarians and left libertarians, right? Mm-hmm. And I always said the right gets more libertarians. Because that was the era of the real hardcore libertarian types of Ron Paul people. Mm-hmm, of course. And the kind of lolbertarian, internet, fashionable, I just want to be liked libertarian right. types. They still went along with Mitt Romney or Paul Ryan or whatever. Right. Trump, I think, broke that. And I think you had a lot of libertarian or libertarian adjacent outlets who just hated this guy so much, and in part because he was more statist and more authoritarian than the libertarian types Mm -hmm. present themselves as, at least, that they tended to go a little bit more either third party, Evan McMullen, Egg McMuffin type guy in 2016, or even some of them now are openly Democrat. I'll say that I think that you're at least correct that in 2016, there were a lot of people that claimed to be libertarians that proved that they weren't actually that. It was yeah. more of, and I think a lot of them fit the bill of the latter position it is that you you mentioned, where you have libertarians or people claiming to be that, that more so use it as a, on some edgelord stuff. Like, yeah. hey, I just don't want to be b- lumped in with these guys or that guy, so I'm just going to I'm above myself. it all. Yeah, that, that I'm type cool. of stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that the, re- the only reason why I would say that I would, I would kind of detach myself from that idea is because... I look at, while that was true, we saw a shift like in the Libertarian Party as an example where the Mises Caucus guys took the entire party over and they were like, you left us all up out of here. And they are still screeching and screaming about that right now. Like, oh my God, look at all the fascists now run the Libertarian Party because <laughs> yeah. you have actual people that actually believe in libertarianism yeah. running it. And unfortunately, and I actually thank Trump in that regard because he showed like these people are more libertine than anything. They're more hedonist, exactly right than anything. They're not. They don't actually value liberty by any means. Yeah, no, that's such a good point. And this is the other thing I've noticed. It's why I can never totally discard the libertarians. Is the the real hardcore types, not the lolberts, not the libertines, but the real hardcore libertarians. I disagree with them on their premises, but I often agree with them on on many of their conclusions. It's sort of like the Mormons to me. You know, the Mormons, I don't don't buy the premises of the religion. And yet when I look at the outcomes of Mormon societies, I agree with a lot of what they're doing, right? And I think there's a, 
uh, yeah, the, the purging of the lolberts, the purging of the yeah. squishes, that's, that can be very helpful. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I'll, I'll drink to that anyway. I'll drink, yeah, yeah. The main reason the left is so focused on destroying superheroes and rewriting their origins is because many of the traditional heroes reflect Christian values. For example, with great power comes great responsibility, Uncle Ben, and uh, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded, St. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Uh, Yeah, okay, I agree with that. Okay, yeah, I, I can agree with it too. It was certainly a lot more traditional back yeah. back in the gap. That, that's it. Yeah, that that's more of the uh, term that I would certainly use with a lot of these characters. I mean, even with uh, Superman, you know, Truth, Justice, and the American Way, um, they they kind of went back on it. Now they're trying to bring it back. I think they realized how much of a terrible idea it was to try to drop some of that some of that rhetoric. I mean, uh, what did they say in the in the movie? This was like 15 years ago. They said it, it now it's going to be Truth, Justice, and all that other stuff. It took out the American way. Yeah, yeah most definitely. So, now they probably take out truth and justice. Oh, now I would say, it, <laughs> I mean, at this rate, definitely uh, the direction that they're going. I don't know if you know that they, did I, I don't remember if we talked about this on, on when we discussed this last year, how now Superman's son is uh, gay. Yeah, that's a thing. It's uh, out of nowhere. He's uh, and they just they didn't they didn't stop telling you about it either. Uh, mm. They made sure that everybody knew just uh, how gay. So who's the lowest lane of the gay super junior? <laughs> uh, I don't. He, he has uh, yeah. neon colored hair. Like seriously, I'm not Le- even. Joking. Leroy Lane is it Lewis Lane? <laughs> it's some guy that has uh, neon colored hair. So That's you know, bad. it's it's yeah. Dennis Rodman. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, even Den- I think Dennis Rodman would be more manly than uh, yeah. than that. Uh, the constant news of aliens is a distraction and not proof of life from a galaxy far away. Eric, you're gonna be hammered on death. What? This. Yeah, bro, it's a complete distraction, and it's a distraction either by the government, because you notice whenever there's a hot political story, like they're indicting the leader of the opposition, all of a sudden these UFOs start popping up everywhere. Uh, so, but but I don't even buy that totally. I mean, the okay. government's always trying to distract us with all sorts of nonsense, but uh, it's a distraction by demons who are here to lure us away. When you see like weird flickerings that defy all the laws of gravity that don't really make any sense based on everything we know about physics and and even light, even the speed of light, uh, and uh, you know they're they're making these ninety degree turns in the sea at like a thousand knots or whatever I don't know whatever uh, g forces that totally exceed expectation. Um, it's because it's demons, man. So you think, be it from the U- UFOs or the unidentified things, yeah. paranormal. You think it's demons? Well, I, yeah, I just think the only less aliens, more demonic. Yeah, it's demonic in the sense that it's not corporeal. So it's okay. It's, the, I think that the only rational soul in the created universe with a body is us. I think okay. we're the pinnacle of creation. Creation is for us. And that's why we don't, you know, like a dog doesn't have a rational soul. That's why we don't put him on trial for biting people. And I don't think there's some superhuman Martian type thing out there somewhere either. I think it's really, really us. Uh, but there are intelligences that are more intelligent than us. Just as there are things that are purely physical and not intelligent, like a rock, there are things that are purely intellect and not body, like angels and demons and spiritual things. And we all, I know this sounds kind of kooky in the modern era, but you know we all acknowledge spiritual reality because mm-hmm. we say there's morality, we say that there's yeah. uh, metaf- metaphysics like hope and dreams and loves and all that. So if you, if you believe that God exists at all, mm-hmm. right, what you're saying is that God the Father is metaphysical. He doesn't have a body. And so we're granting that there is at least one intelligence that is not corporeal. And then if you believe that, then you, you might believe, whether through your natural reason or more likely through revelation, that there are other intelligences that are not corporeal. And I think that's what people are seeing in the sky. Man, I can, I can go either way on that. Or I can say a little bit of both. I do for sure believe that there are demons. I, I think hmm. that there are things that exist that are here, that have been here, and are, it, it's, it's, it's far more difficult to explain. I ha- however, I, I still think that there's an idea 
of something beyond what we know to be our planet mm. that has something. That has, that has any kind of life or intelligent life? I think intelligent life. Maybe not intelligent enough, because I look at it like, you know, Earth, like we have these people that we like to think are intelligent, right? <laughs> and we haven't quite figured out how to even navigate outside of Earth. It's right? like America, frankly. Right, 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 to be, yeah, to be fair, we haven't figured that out. Yeah. So I'd imagine that there may be intelligent life that also hmm. has not been able to crack the code on that. Yeah, okay. So they're contained to their geographical area. Now, as far as them coming here, which they would have to be uber smart, yeah. right, to be able to figure out how to leave where they're at to get here, yeah. that's where I think the debate more so needs to be had. And I don't know if we've seen anything that's that smart. Because, you know, often I was talking about this with a buddy not too long ago. You think about these guys, they see a certain thing, and it's like, hey, this is an alien, right? And he's hiding behind some car or something. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if they were that intelligent to figure out how to get, get here. <laughs> you can they? You know, could, would they be able to, why, why on earth are that's that's how they would react? I, I don't know about that. Yeah, that you just, they like are in your backyard yeah. and you're scampering away. Yeah, I don't really I, buy I, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's my thing. So. Okay, uh, who's up? I think it's you. I just All right, I've had, yeah. I've had three sips of my martini. I didn't have lunch today though, that's why. RFK, junior I assume has a better chance of being on the winning ticket in 2024 election than Joe Biden. All right, that, that winning part is, yeah. is the key. Not the nominee on the winning, on the winning ticket. <laughs> not a chance. No. It's not, I'm not saying it's not a chance that, you know, some crazy world, Trump picks Bobby Kennedy, they run and they win somehow. I'm not saying that can't happen. Today, if you said odds are who wins the presidency 2024, Joe Biden. I mean, they kind of scooted him in there, right? Um, and he's, we can think that he's as crazy and old as, as all get out. But if you don't think they would pull the stop, they have, they already pulled all the stops they could last time. Yeah. With this, they especially would. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just can't. I can't see it. I like to think that maybe, but that's me being too too optimistic that's about it. If I'm going to be rational about this situation, yeah. considering all evidence, there's no way that they would even allow that to happen. It's the thing they found the other day. They found 300 mail-in ballots from 2020 in a locker in Michigan. And I know the, all the, the unit party says, we're not allowed to ever raise any, you can't, I'm not raising any questions. <laughs> Four to it was, the 2020 election was the most secure election ever in all the history of democracy. But I think, man, there's probably a lot of lockers in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, probably a few in Pennsylvania. It'll be, it'll be a lot more uh, <laughs> yeah. this go around, that's for sure. All right, you're up. Plato was clearly on shrooms when he said Atlantis was a real place. Well, now, hold on. I don't want to give, I've kind of given an answer to this in my, I'm not very subtle. <laughs> okay, so. Plato was on shrooms. Give me a break. You know, there were a lot of weird druggy cults back in ancient Greece, but Plato was not among them. Okay. okay. And Atlantis maybe was real. What's your take? What did they say as far as the sea? They say, what is it, 5% of it has been actually discovered, right? Yeah. And we know that there's all sorts of things that, I mean, through the years, you know, the new thing that got discovered in the sea, like this creature might have looked like this. And it's like, mm -hmm. we clearly haven't seen everything. Yeah. Right? And we were just talking about mermaids earlier on. So yeah, maybe that's where they're at. We haven't seen, I mean, to you, not that we haven't seen everything. We haven't seen anything. We have not really explored the ocean. I was, t was talking to a friend of mine. There was that tragedy, obviously, in the ocean a little while ago. And back when it was unclear, if the people in that submersible would still be alive or not. And I said, I asked a friend who was a special forces guy, I said, is there, in, is there any way to locate them? He goes, man, it's the ocean. No. Like, you can't, it's the ocean. You can't find stuff in the ocean, yeah, basically, yeah. you know. Yeah. But like, wow, you're, you're in the Navy. You're supposed to know. But it's just, we talk about exploring outer space. But, you know, when would we even begin to start seriously making a dent into exploring the ocean? That's true. That's Good point. It's actually an even better point. I mean, you look at it might maybe that's the you, you deal with finding what's in the ocean before you even explore 
that idea. Yeah. I mean, because it has a lot, I don't want to say similarities, but as far as the pressure and all, that's yeah. all stuff that you deal with in, if you went to space uh, as well. But yeah, the, the, it's here, you know, and we haven't figured out how to how to actually navigate it. And because find- of that, I, I believe definitely deep down in there, some probably crazy animals out there, man. Yeah. Like insane ones. And some super hot mermaids. <laughs> I think we both know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Every Hollywood superhero moving forward will be required to have at least one LGBTQ character shoved into the story. Uh, Yeah. What do you mean moving forward? (laughs) We're already (laughs) there, buddy. We're already. Oh, I I have that. I mean, they're not even able to get nominated for certain awards unless they check these boxes, Mm -hmm. right? So Hollywood did themselves in. This is why I've said it might get worse before it get better. Yeah. Because. They've made it abundantly clear, and they they love that stuff, right? It's all about the peers. They really don't care about what customers think at all. It's like right. they, they want to get the admiration from the peers. Yeah. So and the, and the investment from the of course, uh, yeah, exactly. So it would be any of that ESG stuff, whatever that is. They have to check the box, so they feel like they have to check the box. So for sure, you're going to get, even though it's an overrepresentation. I don't know if you if you saw that glad. They had did some like end of year, like um, they went through all the TV shows and they were looking at it. It's really detailed. And in comparison to the population, it's they're, they're actually vastly, it's not even close, overrepresented. Wait, hold on. You're not, you're telling me that not 97% of human beings are <laughs> like transgender or something? It's not even close. So when they published that, I was like, they're kind of doing themselves in uh, there because they that's what they've led with, right? They need to be represented like this, uh, the, the world outside, and this is how it looks nowadays. This is why old stuff has to be changed because this is how it looks. And you see those percentages, and it's like 20% here of, uh, of like 50% here, and I'm like, wow, this is... Uh, this is a high. Uh, you guys are vastly overrepresented. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like I didn't realize that everybody was a lesbian. I had who knew? <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. It's racist to cast black actors as traditionally white characters. It is racist? It's racist to cast black actors as traditionally white characters. Well, I'll answer for you. I'm actually kind of torn on it myself. Uh, okay. It's racist to cast. I'm going to say, you would say it's not racist. It's just like stupid. Okay. I would say, I would say both. I'm going to okay. tell you why. I'm going right. to make my case here. Yeah. So I call this tokenism. That's the term that I live yeah, I see, what, sure. you know, that's what I call it. So when I see race swaps, you can even apply gender, sexuality, all that stuff. I I call that tokenism. So for me, I do think it is a slap in the face, and I do think it is. The reason why I would call it slightly racist, and I don't use that term loosely, is because they often, like, let's speak about superheroes, excuse me. They generally have a big pool, Marvel DC. They have an encyclopedia that they put out all the time. Yeah, yeah. Where... They have a, I mean, an incredible amount of, let's say, non-white characters. Mm-hmm. They get left on the shelf, mm-hmm. and their version of <laughs> representation or trying to do something that is "quote unquote" black is turning something that everybody recognize, everybody yeah, yeah. recognizes yeah. as white, yeah. to just race swapping it. Yeah, yeah, and then they just say, "Hey, here's a palette swap. It's a new character." Like, yeah. no, it's not. It's just that char- character in blackface. That's all. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, that's true. No, yeah. you're right, and it's racist in the sense that. It is, the decision is made almost entirely on the basis of race. Yes. And it's to, yeah. That's the so, primary uh, determinant. Uh, that's true. The counterexample to this is Denzel in Macbeth, I think. I, I think that, I love Denzel Washington. I think he's one of the greatest living actors. And Macbeth is a Scottish character. Yes. So, you know, you'd say, okay, it should be a Scottish part. But Shakespeare, I think, has transcended a, a limit for, that, that virtually no other writer gets to transcend where, his plays are taken as so representative of the universal human condition that you can do it. You can get away with it. It, does, it doesn't bother me on the screen. Whereas like a uh, black James Bond, I would say, well, I don't know. James Bond's not black. I know. Yeah. It's like, uh, much as I love the James Bond movies, they have not transcended the limit where I think they're talking about a universal human condition. Okay. And so, so I think, and, and also uh, Denzel's performance was just so good. Do you, do you right? think that's like the time that is past? 
that makes you, to you, do you think that it, that's what makes it acceptable? No, I think it's that. I mean, we call Macbeth the Scottish play, but it's not, it's not just about Scotland. It's not just about Scottish people. It's about human beings and power okay. and ambition. And whereas James Bond is really about like a British guy, you know? Yeah. And, and so with th- that would be one exception. Now, there was a big debate on this back in, I think it was the 90s, between uh, this guy, Brewstein, who was the head of the Yale Repertory Theater and then uh, took over a theater in Boston, American, the American Repertory Theater, I think, and uh, August Wilson, who was one of the big black playwrights who did uh, Fences, which is another Denzel movie, actually, and did Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and all these, all these plays that, were, that are pretty good. They're not, they're not Shakespeare, but they're pretty good. Yeah. And Brewstein was a white liberal, and he said, you need to be able to race swap. You need to be able to have colorblind casting. And August Wilson, who is, I think he was mixed race, but he identified as black. He said, uh, no, you need white parts for white people, black parts for black people. And at the time, Brewstein's view was the liberal view. But now, August Wilson's oh, view is the yeah, liberal view. Yeah. And I don't know, it just keeps switching. switching and yeah. anything you do, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Yeah, okay. But I, I agree. I guess, okay, I'm going to give you the point that you got me right. Okay. Because it is... When they do it, they're doing it because they're saying like, hey, we're going to give this little token to yes. a black guy and yes. we're going to stick it to the white guy. Yes. That's true. That's, That's yeah. true. I agree. Most definitely. Uh, you? Okay, I'm up. Drag Queen Story Hour is protected under the First Amendment. No. Uh, it's not, my man. Yeah, uh, Here we go. Uh, uh, th- this is what go. I will. I, 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 yeah, I, the, man. the reason why I'll say this is, oh, my God. Definitely what, because it involves children. Obviously, that's the big, the big issue with it, the core issue with it. But you look at even what historically, actually, drag has a lot of similarities historically to blackface. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. It's actually came about around the same, roughly the same time, mm-hmm. and really for the same reasons, to be completely fair. Mm-hmm. You had black actors um, that couldn't act in these plays, obviously, mm-hmm. and they thought to make, you know, these sort of hyper uh, weird versions of them, and they used to do the same thing with uh, uh, women. And for me, it became this, uh, for them, you know, this uber-sexual thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I think if for people that value liberty, and I'm saying this obviously as a libertarian, we recognize that you know, children and protecting their sanctity is something that should be of yeah. the utmost importance, right? And to me, drag queen story hour, you take this sexualized sort of, I don't know, subculture, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And you're- It's like parading, a burlesque show. Yeah, yeah, par- yeah. Par- parading around in that and then speaking to children. Like that would, I would imagine though, unfortunately not, not enough people would be against that. And that yeah. doesn't fall- under some umbrella of being uh, of, of it being liberty or being based on liberty, if we if we accept that children can't consent and we if we uh, accept the idea that their their innocence should be preserved, yeah. then that is something that is rotten and abhorrent, right? So that that's my opinion. that's the thing about the, the really hardcore libertarian types today who I who I would identify as on the right. They're not these relativist squishy jokes no. who say. You know, well, actually, you know, James Madison secretly wanted a bunch of <laughs> drag queens yeah. to jiggle for kids. Like, yeah. are you kidding? He's rolling in his grave thinking about that. The, the ones today who are really hardcore are the ones who have a, not a relativistic framework, a very hardcore objective framework yeah. of morality. And they say, no. You know, they're the ones who are pro-life. Yeah. It's the squish libertarians who say, well, actually, you know, the states yeah. can decide or yeah, whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. like, no, you're saying that. Uh, actually, if, if we have any rights at all, we've yeah. got the right to life. Bingo. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's good. Yeah. You're making me a libertarian. <laughs> My success. Or at least, you're making me at least very amenable to libertarianism. <laughs> Ooh. Metal is the only genre worse than rap. You'll say no. Of course. I mean, yeah. obviously, this is... This is, uh, <laughs> this is rigged. Yeah. This, this is, is rigged by the producers. Uh, I'm a big metal guy, huge metal guy, massive um, performant. And though I will say that if I am to put them both like on a just straight artistic level, I have to put metal above rap. Yeah. And I say this as a guy that has performed in both, both genres, though, yeah, as of late, primarily metal just because the instrumentation and all that stuff. And there's a level of creativity that comes with rap, but 
you can't really get away with being a terrible <laughs> metal artist, but you could certainly get away with being a terrible rapper. So yeah. that way, I, I mean... No, man, listen, I mean, my name is Wonder Mike, and I've come <laughs> to say hello to the black, the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. So I'm very well aware of, of the intricacies of rapping. I think you're right, too, on the instrumentation, because you know, metal is too percussive and too... Uh, flat in its uh, harmonics, I think. Okay. But the melodies can be really wild, right? Because yeah. it's just, you know not the vocal melodies, but the guitars are just like flying everywhere. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like Ingve Malmsteen or some mm-hmm. like insane, you know, virtuosic playing. Whereas for for rap, you don't usually get melody. The you do you get you get too much percussion in metal, but you also get the, you get too much percussion in rap too. So I think that's about even. The one the one. I'll probably get canceled for saying this. The, the one exception to rap, though, is like Kanye, who in, at this time of hardcore gangster rap comes in and just reintroduces this really light, melodic, kind of musically interesting Creative. type of rap. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, and, and there, but that's the problem of why if we're going to talk about it as a genre, uh, you know, yeah, you have those, you Kanye's, the Lauryn Hills, and yeah. the, the, the people that are producing the rap, art, rap that have been able to blend genres as well as be able to obviously show that they have a creative bone uh, in, in their body. And even like from the rap stuff, you know, the Nas is where they're being actual wordsmith, right? Yeah, not, yeah. not just rhyming the end of the word, but like being actual wordsmith. But again, the problem is, is that as a genre, that's that's not the main thing. Like, yeah, it's yeah, not what's right. going to hit the billboard charts. It's not what yeah. what's being uh, created. Whereas to, again, with metal music, yeah. There's no room for that. You, there's no, uh, I don't know who the, maybe a hot rapper is, but there's no, like, metal equivalent to that. You know, yeah. it doesn't exist. Yeah, okay. You, I'm up. You up. Here we go. Then you get the last card. <laughs> it's okay to drink Bud Light. Yeah, you know, remember with Seinfeld? And it's like, no, that there's anything wrong with that. If you're picking up that Bud Light, man. <laughs> There's, there's At this point, yeah, you're, you're gonna get judged, and uh, rightfully yeah, so. There is. With, um, yeah, I mean. Like, I'm not saying that I'm gonna like send the police to your home to arrest yeah. you if you. But it's like there's not there's something a little wrong if you're picking yeah, up that, Bud Light. I, I mean, it, 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 this thing became so massive, man. That yeah. even like normies know about what's going <laughs> on with it. Like even people that just don't they don't keep up with. That's this. the marker is when the normies figure yeah. out. Not these people who are watching politics all day. Yeah, yeah. The normies, normies now understand it, and I think, yeah, I mean, if, if their stock is anything or their brand in itself is anything to show for it, people are responding the way that they are. And, but, yeah, you, I mean, we make jokes about it now. I, mean, I don't think that's ever going to go away. You do something mildly fruity, we're going to say, oh, that guy drinks Bud Light. That's just what it is. I, had, I knew I was at this wedding for my cousin, and so, you know, the cousins are pretty close, and we got a bunch of them, and this one... Cousin comes over and he's like, hey, hey, Michael, um, you need another drink? I was like, yeah, I got another drink. He's like, cool, I, I got your beer. I figured you'd really like it. You know, it's a Bud Light. And I thought, man, if this is a, I've had liberal friends make this joke. I've had concern. I've had yeah. not that politically engaged. And I thought, oh, that's bad. You don't come back from becoming a meme. <laughs> no, you don't. You know? There's no turning around from that. Okay. All right. Last one. Last one. Let's see what we got. Women should never fight in action movies. <laughs> it, it, ru- <laughs> it ruins the movie about, 90, I think this is the key, 97% of the time. So if maybe you disagree on the percentage, but let's say 97% of the time. Hmm. So the first part. Women, women should, should never fight in action movies. I don't like to see women being hurt. Okay. So I lean a little bit yes, but as a hard rule for filmmaking, the problem with women fighting in the movies is not the fighting. It's that they beat up the guys, okay. which is absurd. And so women I would I would allow in very, you know, tastefully shot, you know, where it's not too graphic or anything. I would allow the studios to allow women to fight in the movies. Okay. But they have to lose. Like, you can't have some little girl beating up the Hulk, you know? And, and that's why I would say 
you know, hmm. okay. this is what I'll say. Okay. I think if it's done, and even definitely, especially it would be like Kill Bill or something, you know, that like yeah. fighting like even another woman or something like that. Yes. I think. I yeah, think yeah, that, that's true. I think that that could be that could be huge. Mm-hmm. Um, or if they have powers, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that makes it make a little more sense. But I'm with you on or a gun. I can <laughs> that, that's the that's that, the, the that's probably even better. That, that that that's the great equalizer, <laughs> as they all say. But yeah, if you get some like Scra- even if they do have powers, but if it's like some scrawny, and generally they kind of do that, not built, probably, you, it's not believable, right? Yeah. And it's like, the first thing is going to go in your mind, it's like, all right, this chick just went in, Black Widow kind of, it happens sometimes, yeah. right? Where it's like, she just went in and destroyed, like, all of these built dudes that are also, like, probably as, um, in, a, in levels of uh, expertise, probably up there with her. Maybe that doesn't happen, right? It doesn't happen to that degree. So, in an action movie, I, I, I <sighs> yeah, I remember in one of the new Stuff. Star Warses, one of the Disney Star Warses, I guess it was the first one, maybe, where the little girl is fighting the big new Darth Vader guy, and they're fighting with lightsabers. I thought, like, that's not does it's not believable. That's not in any way. Like, do you know what muscle is? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what swords are like to fight yeah. with? That's not. It's yeah. just so. I'm right there with you on that. Yeah. Like, it, it, I, but I do believe that it can be believable. I think it can be yeah. believable. And but you need film, to explain it. I mean, yeah, you yeah. can't. It can't just be like, okay, I'm a chick, but I've got girl power. Well, yeah. See, and that team says why I think so many people are leaning towards this moronic idea that, well, people have a problem with women being in action films, and I think that's less of the issue. I think more is the setting that they're being put in, and mm-hmm. people are like. This is corny, and right. I can kind of, I can be be with them on that. Yeah, I'm fi- I'm happy to have women in movies. I really enjoy it when women are in movies. They got, but they got to play women. Mm-hmm. They can't be playing men. No, right. Eric, I I truly have no idea who won or lost that game. Where can people get that comic book? Ripperverse.com. You can go to the campaign page there. You can pre-order, get you all your perks. We got bundles. People are able to save money. We got several covers as well mm-hmm. uh, of that. That's the main cover right there. But there's several other covers that you can get. Um, as well, and um, just, we appreciate it. We appreciate it big time. This is something that's been unprecedented. It wasn't supposed to happen when it happened the first time, and here we go again. It shows that it wasn't just like... It wasn't a fluke. No, not by any means. So I'm very appreciative. My team's very appreciative, and look, I'm just thankful to be in a position where we're able to employ people in an industry that people thought were dying. You know, it's it's a challenge. Not, Not only have you softened me on libertarianism, You've softened me on comic books. I, it's very impressive, Eric. Thank you for coming on. Hello, brother. See you next time. And we'll see you next time on Yes or No. Yes or No.